Hi there, my name's Andy Young and I'm one of the automotive lecturers down at Unitech in Auckland, New Zealand and welcome to my Andy Mechanic YouTube channel. Okay, on this very short video I'm going to show you, oh, sorry, it's a continuation of the RAV4 engine saga. And I have no idea what episode this is, but it'll tell you in the title. It's probably about 22, 23, I don't know, there's loads out there. Uh, and on this particular video, I'm going to show you how to measure ring, piston ring side clearance. Now, when this piston goes up and down the bore, the rings, the piston rings, obviously have some pressure that push against on the bore, and that's what creates a seal. Um, however, what happens is the rings want to really stay with the bore and not with the piston. So the piston actually has very slight movement up and down. So when the, when the piston is going up the bore, it takes with it the rings, and then when it stops and comes back down, the rings basically stick to the bore, and then they, they, uh, the piston drops down, and the ring smacks against the top of the groove. And then when it hits the bottom, it smacks against the bottom of the piston, uh, piston ring groove. And over a long period of time, the groove that's machined into the piston for the piston ring actually starts to grow slightly. So you get more, what we call in Yorkshire, we get more slop. We get more play between the piston ring and the piston. And that actually exacerbates the problem even more. So the more play you get, the more of a hammering effect you get on the piston. It's only made out of aluminium, and the piston rings are cast iron, so... Um, you know, the piston is the one that wears. So, in order to determine how worn the piston is as regards um, the grooves for the piston rings, we can use a feeler gauge and measure that. Now, in the Toyota manual, and you've got to, you've got to have the manual specific to the engine that you're working on because all the measurements are different for different engines. Um, on this one here, we've got a side clearance for number, number one piston ring, and that's the one at the top is number one piston ring of 0 0.03 to 0 0.07 millimeters and it's the same clearance for ring number two that's the second one down now the third ring down here is made is the oil scraper ring and that's usually made up of three different components and we don't have a side clearance specification with that you don't bother to measure that bit so we only need to interest ourselves in the in the two rings that are on the piston now the, the top one and the middle one and what I did is I took them off the piston on a previous video and I've now cleaned out all the carbon deposits, um, all the gunge from behind those rings uh, or any of the gunge within those grooves to give us an accurate reading. I've also given the piston rings a bit of a clean down and all I used to clean out the grooves was a scriber, which is not too sharp, and a blunt flat blade screwdriver, a small one, just to scrape out all the carbon and there was a lot of carbon on this engine um, which was obviously a bit of an issue because it was burning lots of oil so now we've put the rings back on again and it's important that you remember which is the top ring which is the middle ring um, because they are different those are now refitted so we can use some feeler gauges which I have just here to measure the gap or the additional clearance between the piston ring and the piston itself and I'll put it in the vise with a rag so you can get a nice clear view of what's going on here we go okay so the specifications the tolerance is 0 0.03 to 0 0.07 so if we find 0 0.07 millimeters or just under there we are look let's do that one there's 0 0.064 millimeter feeler gauge now if that does not fit in the gap between the piston ring um, and the piston ring, the top of the piston ring groove, then we know that we're still okay. If it does, then we're going to be outside spec. The gap's too big, and it should be changed. Okay. So measuring piston number one first. Ooh. Okay. So that does go in. Look at that. Okay, you see that on the camera? Yeah, you can see that. Okay, so that actually does go in the gap. So let's see if we've got... That's 0 0.064. Let's see if we can get it up to 0 0.07. So we're right on spec. Now then, there was... Where was it? There was a 0.76. Let's try that one. That's, I know that's slightly over spec, but let's see if that's going to fit in there. If that doesn't then um, 
we're probably right on the limit of spec. Okay. Uh, now that fits too. Pretty tight fit, but it does fit. So, yeah, they're a little bit overworn, to be honest. Okay, let's try the next ring down. Ring number two, same specification. Let's try that larger feeler gauge in there. Ah, now that one doesn't go in. Okay, so let's go back to the six four one, just to be on the safe side. There we go. Right, let's try that one on ring number two. No, it doesn't fit in either. So it's only the groove on piston ring number one that's excessive. Well, I say excessively worn. It's pretty much right on the limit of being worn out, or what's what's within spec. Okay, so we can go down a bit actually and see what that other one, see what ring number two is. Uh, what's the next one down? Well, there's a point three, point, point five one is the next feeler gauge down. Let's try that one first. Yeah, that just to say goes in. Look. Yeah, there you go. So the groove, the piston groove, or piston ring groove number two on the piston is within spec uh, but unfortunately the groove for piston ring number one is out of spec now don't forget this is a combination of wear between the piston groove itself and the piston ring so it may be when we fit new piston rings that the clearance then falls back within spec because we are only just outside spec so a new piston ring might just to say bring it back into spec okay there you go. So there you go, that's how you measure piston ring side clearance. And um, before you start, you have to make sure the piston is super clean uh, in those grooves. And again, of course, the piston rings are free of any kind of carbon deposits, that kind of stuff. Otherwise, you're not going to get an accurate reading. Okay, well, that's the end of this video. I told you it'd be quite short. Um, we're doing these checks in bite-sized chunk videos so each video just covers one particular engine measurement task and um, well if you've got any questions or comments then please do leave them down the bottom and I'll get back to you as soon as I possibly can if you'd like to subscribe then great come on board you know the more the merrier and is seeing those subscription numbers climb uh, really gives me an incentive to continue doing these videos for you guys and uh, some of the feedback that I'm getting is fantastic so thank you very much uh, and of course, you know, my students also enjoy these videos too. That's what it's all about. If you do decide to subscribe, then also click on the little gear icon next to the subscribe button and turn on your notifications. And that way you'll get an email come through as and when any new videos get uploaded to the channel. And there's usually five, usually around about five each week. At the moment, there's a few more than that because I'm really busy trying to get all these engine videos, uh, engine measurement videos uploaded ready for the start of the semester. Okay, well, thanks for watching the Andy Mechanic YouTube channel. Cheers for now. Over and out.